So we're heading downtown right now. Nick and I are in the cab. We're gonna meet up with the Rose down by Nick's place, and then we're gonna fucking rock out to some modern art. The whole fucking thing about my art these days is like the process of setting up for it a lot of times takes longer than the actual like process of doing it. I've wanted to be an artist in Manhattan since I was in kindergarten. As luck would have it, my college graduation would fall in the same year as 9-11. I started a portrait painting business and three years after graduation I could finally afford a Manhattan studio. My best friend at the time was a filmmaker named Nick Katz. Um, so whatever, I mean, we're just chilling like... He said he wanted to make a documentary film about my life as an artist, and I was more than happy to pitch in ideas. It's actually kind of a nice view. You don't often get this. When I met Renee at the bar she managed in Harlem, it was a quiet weekday night. It would turn out to be the only quiet night we would see together that fall. I had to go toe to toe with a stocky bald Argentinian when he made it clear that they had once been more than just friends. I began following any lead that would keep me moving. Anything to keep me away from my TV. And in Gotham City, there's never a shortage of action. My father recently gave me a buckshot shotgun, which he's had since his days as a captain in the Vietnam War. It was a weapon I had grown to respect as a kid, shooting old pizza boxes in the valley in the woods behind my parents' house. How many guns do you have? Right now, I just uh, have access to two fucking, you know, pretty badass shotguns. But, uh, you know, ultimately, if you talk, talk about the whole film, like, collection, I guess it's somewhere around like 187 guns or something like that. Then there's Ben Rosentrag. When I found out that my personal photographer and the newest member of my team had been going by the nickname Schwag since high school, I knew something had to be done. And thus the legend of the Rose was born. From then on, everywhere I went, girls would ask me, is the Rose coming out this weekend? Or when do I get to meet the Rose? Nick and I had consumed and collected over 80 bottles of wine since the beginning of the project. Building the trough with plaster, paint, and wine bottles was a 12-hour task, but at the end of the day, we had what we wanted. Just someone say the day. The world. November, November something, the end of the world. What, what year, what year, man? Yeah. It's Jack Smith Day! The last day of the Fantastic. <laughs> 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 
You know how long it's been since I've actually slept like more than two hours? That's perfect time to talk about the shotgun explosion. Yeah, exactly. you're absolutely right. Exactly. We always. Yeah. You tell us what you know about the shotgun okay. explosion. So we have wine, we have a shotgun, we have a trough full of 100 wine bottles filled with blood red paint. Now, the shotgun's buckshot goes to the wine bottles, splatters the paint on the canvas. And what we basically have is an interaction between aggressive violence and passive, like almost painful, slow growth of wine, which we all know is what makes it so beautiful. When that buckshot goes through the wine bottles, it shatters the bottles with plaster. I'm yeah. not quite sure how that interaction is going to work. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> The, the effect <laughs> of the paint awesome on the on video, canvas, though. the effect of the paint on canvas, okay, but what about the two-dimensional object, the actual art object? Like after well, the, the art object, like, I, that's why I'm going to have to be totally fucking zen uh -huh. state of mind when I fucking blow zen that shit Zen or away. bent? No, zen. Zen, okay. Like, I, like, you saw that fucking card that I gave, uh -huh. you know, like, I fucking spent four months thinking about that shit and then did it in four seconds. day of the year happened right before Thanksgiving when the middle-aged Argentinian, just picture a tiny hairless version of King Kong, came running across the basement of the bar in Harlem, grabbed my vodka and smashed it against the brick wall, took a nose drink and smashed it on the other wall. Then he started shouting about how he'd die for her and how he'd go to jail for her and then he dove at me and busted through the wine cellar door. Renee burned him with her cigarette and his face became redder than a pool of blood. He continued to shout and scream until finally he said that if I hung around the neighborhood, that he was gonna put a hit on me. My man Dusty had been in the city the whole time, but had chosen to keep his distance from the project disliking the constant intensity which tightly orbited any conversation involving shotguns or paint or wine. Nick asked me, like, do you really think he's like a Picasso? Like, do you think he's that good? And the reality is, he thinks he's that good. When I saw Die Hard 4 was being scripted, I decided it was time to pay tribute to Bruce Willis's signature character by painting a seven foot widescreen painting of a still frame from Die Hard 1. John McClane by John McClane. I thought it would be good publicity for both of us.
I mean, we've been doing this for six months now. It's like, at first I didn't know what was going on. Like, now, like, we're just fully involved. You know, there's, like, no joking around about it. Jimmy Kuiper on the drone. Standing in line to see the show tonight And there's a light on Heavy glow By the way, I tried to say I'd be there Waiting for Danny the girl is singing songs to me beneath 